Hello and welcome to Computer Deck and More to, and welcome to a special edition of my videos. In this one we're going to be going over my opinion as to the best keyboard in a bunch of different categories and as well as the best keyboard that I think I liked the best and kind of why I chose it that way and try to give you some information so that you can choose whichever one you think will work best for you. Before we get into it, if you're wondering why some of the keyboards aren't on or removed out of their boxes, it is simply because I ran out of USB ports on my computer to, uh, well, to power these things. <laughs> so I have uh, keyboards everywhere and every which way with lighting. Anyways, let's get into it. First, I want to talk about which keyboards I like the best. So first, full disclosure, the drop shift, which is this one, is my personal keyboard. It is the one I've purchased, owned for myself, everything else I'm basically taking a look at temporarily. So they are, if I decide to keep it, then it'll be a purchase. If I not, it's a basically a return. And not every keyboard that I've taken a look at is currently here because I've decided to won't well, return a bunch of them. So, so far, the keyboard that I think I like the best to kind of take over a lot of this one's duty and make this one my work from home keyboard is actually the Razer Azoff, or not Razer, um, ROG Azoff. I really like its form factor. I like a lot of the features about it. I like the key presses. Uh, my biggest gripe with it is actually the software and the price, but everything else about it I absolutely love. Unfortunately, I don't have any professional reviews, well, from my most trusted source currently, which is ratings, R-T-I-N-G-S, the reviews coming up. And at its current price of $250, with its software and it right now not um, every time I plug it into a different computer, it has to wait till the computer starts up before it loads the lighting scheme. I'm a little hesitant about per actually keeping this one, so my general recommendation of that is look at it at under two at the $200 price point. I bought this one; it was $250. That's the drop shift, so I'd be looking at the ROG one at. On, at about $200, considering that it's missing a USB pass-through, even though it does have a nifty OLED screen, but it is a smaller form factor size, so that kind of thing. Other keyboards that I've been heavily considering is the Steel Series Apex Pro, not listed here, and the 10, 10 keyless form factor. Uh, it features um, replaceable hot swappable linear optical switches. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, because they are optical, you can't use standard tactile, tactile switches, and it may only be compatible with Steel Series own optical switches. I was also considering the Apex 9, which is just a baby step down, but all those are contingent on price point, and I do prefer the ass off over both of those. I think I like the 75% over the 80% cent, 80 which is 10 keyless size. Next, I would say the drop shift. I actually think I like the shift better than 10 keyless form factor. You're not giving up that much space by going to the drop shift. So for example, here's a 10 keyless, the Razer Deathstalker and the drop shift. That's maybe an inch and a half. Uh, a a 75% gives you another inch or so and going ah, so many keyboards 65% gives you maybe an extra two inches beyond that so oh, I'm holding too many keyboards at once oh I hope I didn't so going 65% versus 75% you're really not gaining anything it's very minuscule amount of space so kind of, I really do like having a numpad, but I would like the extra desk, desk space. And again, I'm gonna just bring this one up to kind of compare. Just the keyboard layout, what keys are available. I just really think that the 75% really gets me more or less what I need. So print screen, I just do have to push like FN, but who cares that much? I mean, over here, Where's print screen anyways? And I use print screen pretty often at work or actually on my computer. So that's, that's why I bring that one up. 
but like there's insert, delete, delete, end. Don't even, I don't know why you would need end. Just, I just tend to scroll to the bottom. So I don't even need that key. Page up, page down. I don't even use, I actually don't use page up, page down because you can use the arrow keys. So pretty much the extra functionality that is in the 10 keyless design, I, I don't need. So 75% is perfect for me. While I have found that a 65%, let's get one that has lighting. Uh, just doesn't quite have enough. Mind, it technically has all the same keys as a 75%. They're just a little bit more compact. But I do, I don't really use the FN row, but it's, I guess I put it as nice to have and I visually would rather have it than have to use the function to, to get me there. Um, yeah, I just prefer the look, I guess. So that's up to you. So I prefer visually the way a 75% looks over a 65%, even though they are functionally equivalent in terms of the overall functionality for me personally. And then, so I've given you the ones I like the best. So as off number one, drop shift number two, uh, number three would be probably the Razer Deathstalker. Again, this is uh, price, price not withholding. Then we have the Steel Series Apex Pro and then Apex 9. Okay, now we're going to move on to kind of more empirical type analysis. And this will be for the 65% slash pseudo 75% keyboards. Which ones do I think are superior to inferior? Well, first and foremost, I think the Azoth is the best, but it's also the most expensive at $250. It comes in with a whole lot of extras, but it is simply the best. But it's also not 65%, it is 75%, but I feel it's appropriate to at least talk about it in this category. And then after basically the Azoth, I'd say that the Falchion, Falcon, I'm not 100% I'm not sure as to how it's pronounced. I do apologize if, I, if you know properly would be those, these two from um, Asus ROG. So the Ace version is 119 and the full-blown wireless one is 150. I think that either one of these would be like the next best and it's up to you to determine if you feel that that price is appropriate at that level. But both Falchions were rated very well in ratings, both at gaming performance at 9.3, build quality at 8.5, backlighting 9.9, .9, typing quality at 8.5, and latency at 9.9 .9 with 1.3 millisecond response time. The next in the lineup, I feel, would be the Drop Alt keyboard, which is not here. Again, it's a 65%. And it has a gaming score by ratings at 8.3, office at 8.1, Build quality at a 9, uh, backlighting at 9.5, typing quality 8.5, and latency is 8.1 milliseconds, rating of an 8. Next, I basically had the Glorious GMMK2, which was $103. I felt that that one was just fine, but it had a fixed angle, so it was a little bit steeper. So I found it to be less comfortable to type on for me personally. That's why I rated it there. And then last is the Cooler Master CK720. I had a lot of issues with their software and it actually nearly broke my computer. So uh, I'm kind of like stay away from this one period, even though the typing experience on it was just fine and the keyboard layout is also just fine. I just really had a bad experience with the software. But if you have a good experience with the software, this may be a good pick for you. So that's why it's rated so low. Okay, next we're taking a look at the 75 to 80% category. So this is 75% keyboards and 10 keyless designs. So my, the number one pick, in my opinion, is the Azoth again. Again, it's a $250 keyboard, so you have to justify that price for yourself. My next pick was the Razer Deathstalker. Again, it's around a $226, $250 keyboard, somewhere in that range. I really liked the... Um, low profile keycaps on it, but I'm just not a huge fan of linear. So that kind of is an offset for me. I prefer the tactile feedback 
that I could get on the Azov. But if you love linear and quick switches, you, you just can't beat that. The Death Stalker had a rating of 9.3. For gaming, build quality was rated an 8, backlighting at 9.9, .9. typing quality is a 7, latency is 4.7 milliseconds, wired with the receiver is 5.1, and Bluetooth is 11.6. So it's not quite pro level gaming, but it's certainly very, very good. Next, I would say my pick would be the NuFi Nufi Air 75. It has a gaming score of 8.6, a uh, office work of 7.5, programming is 8, 7.8, .8, a build quality of 8.5. The backlight feature by ratings is rated as a 10. However, the keys don't shine through like these keys. So in my opinion, it has actually lower than that, even though it's got great color mixing. The typing quality was rated as a 7.5, with it being fairly quiet, and the latency wired mode was rated at 6.3, latency at, or at, and with the receiver at 10.4, and Bluetooth at 4. 24.4 milliseconds. Next, we have sort of a tie with the Razer Huntsman 10 Keyless and the Logitech Min MX Mini. The Huntsman is the better gaming keyboard. The Logitech MX Mini is the better keyboard for like office work. The Logitech, not visually seen, for gaming was rated at 8.6, office work was uh, 9.7, at least for the full size one, and programming is rated at an 8. Build quality with tactile switches is rated at 8.5, ergonomics at 7.5, backlighting is 8.9, one color illumination there. Typing quality was rated as an 8, typing noise 8.2, latency is 7.1, with the receiver it has 13.8 milliseconds, and latency Bluetooth is 15.9, so its latency is not particularly good. As for the Razer Huntsman, gaming performance is rated at 9.3, office work 8.2, programming 8.1, build quality is 8.5, backlighting is 9.9, .9. typing quality is 8.5, and latency is a perfect 10 with a 0.5 millisecond response time. So this is actually by far the best gaming keyboard. Next in this category, in my opinion, is kind of another well, quasi tie is the Kcron K3, which is 70 bucks, so it wins out right there, and the Razer Ornata 10 Keyless, which is back here. This Ornata, actually, I had the fastest typing speed of any keyboard I've tested thus far. It features uh, membrane uh, clicky style switches, so it's a, uh, what do they call it, mecha membrane. So if you like membrane switches, that is a good pick, although I find it a little bit noisy, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. Um, I just didn't really like the noise, even though I had a great typing experience on it. So, win-loss, I guess. As for the performance of the Ornata, its gaming was a 6.9, office work 6.9, programming 6.5, build quality 6.5, backlighting 5.4, uh, Typing quality is 6.5, latency is 7.5 with a 10.2 millisecond. So that was also its biggest weakness. It only has lighting zones. It doesn't have per key illumination. If they got rid of the, ta the clicky sound and made it more just like a linear with per key illumination, I think that one would be the best one and just have, it have a quicker response time, I guess. And then we have the NZXT. Uh, right here. This is the NZXT function. The keyboard itself is kind of okay. Um, no real complaints. I think the layout looks good. The per key illumination is actually quite excellent. My biggest gripe with it is the software. I found the software extraordinarily tedious to use to set up lighting profiles. But of course, once they're fully installed, you could technically just remove the software as long as you are going to plan on keeping the exact same lighting setup forever. Um, then it would be perfectly fine, but uh, I just found the whole experience to be kind of subpar. So I put it as, it's fine, it's a good keyboard, just know what you're getting into. Uh, see my full review, but 
its quick specs from rating is 8.6 for gaming, office work 7.5, programming 7.4, build quality 7.5, backlight quality at 9.6, typing quality 7.5, and latency is an 8.5 with a 6.9 millisecond response time. And last, dead last, is the Cooler Masker SK630. And I didn't like the island style, just flat square keycaps. I kept getting lost while typing, basically. Couldn't just feel my way through it. The low profi profile switches were, were good. I liked that. But um, once again, the Cooler Master software just was broken and wouldn't load on the keyboard. So just saying a hard, fast no to that. And that brings us to the final category, which is full-size keyboards or like 96%, which is what the drop shift is. And in this category, I've actually only tested two keyboards, the drop shift and the GMMK2 Glorious. And for me, the drop shift is the winner easily. First, the drop shift, its gaming rating is 8.2. Its office work is 8.2. Programming is 7.9. Its build quality is rated at a nine with its PBT keycaps. Its backlight lighting is rated at 9.5. Typing quality is rated at a 9. Typing noise, it's fairly quiet. Its latency is rated at 8.8 .8 with a 6.2 millisecond response time. So that's plenty good for an average gamer. The GMMK2 has a rating of 8.3 for gaming, 7.4 for office work, and a 7.7 .7 for programming. Build quality is an 8.5. It features ABS plastic keycaps as opposed to PBT. Ergonomics are also reduced because it doesn't sit quite as flat, so it causes wrist strain. Backlighting is rated at a perfect 10, with backlight clarity rated at an 8. Typing quality is an 8.5. And latency is rated at a 6.1. So it had overall very similar features to the drop shift and overall fairly similar score, just with basically reduced quality keycaps and had a fixed angle that's actually steeper than what I use on my drop shift. So for that reason, I just like the shift better. And I don't really like full size keyboards anymore that are 100% full. So really the 96% is kind of where I'm sitting if I'm going to be looking at that size category. All right, before we end this video, keyboards that I 100% do not recommend. The Cooler Master SK630 uh, at $125. The uh, Cooler Master CK720. I didn't like the uh, Steel Series Apex 7, which was $120 when I took a look at it. The Then we have like ones that I consider reduced quality, but still kind of acceptable, which would be like the NZXT, which was sitting right there. The Ornata. It's just a little bit subpar, even at $70 price point. Though, and uh, those are ones I consider to be subpar, but kind of acceptable. So if you're on a tighter budget, they would work just fine, but um, I don't recommend them very well. But there we are. That's the end of this video. Thank you for joining me on the journey. Um, since I haven't finalized my selection of a keyboard yet, the Azoth is looking like the strongest contender, but that doesn't mean that's what I'm going to go with. Um, Razer is also a very strong pick for me. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm going to be keeping an eye on pricing and, well, I'll definitely let you all know which one I end up choosing. And if I comp go completely the other direction, I'll, I'll still let you guys know. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.